Hi, this is Rainbow Harmony here to help you find balance and peace to live a more colorful life. And I'm out here by the beach again to do a pick a card reading for you guys with my Dig Deeper Oracle deck. Before we get into the reading, I just wanted to show you guys some shots from this beautiful, beautiful beach and location where I'm living right now in Croatia. And I'm like on a bike trail today and I saw this spot and I just thought I have to pull over and do this reading for you guys. So I hope that you guys enjoy and I'll see you in a second. So today's reading is called Get Your Ass Kicked with my Dig Deep Oracle deck. This deck was made for me by a subscriber actually that I met here in Croatia. Her name is Nevis and she's actually an animal psychic or an animal communicator. So I'm going to leave her information for her Instagram below in case you want to check her out. But she did the sweetest thing. She spent a lot of time tapping into my channel and tapping into my energy to flow these cards through and like the whole concept of this deck is the main messages that I give here on this channel and when I first received this deck I just cried because I was like oh my gosh it's so crazy to just see like all of my messages and all these vibes that I've just been like sometimes I feel all over the place with these messages but to see them all written down and like to have a deck and like a guidebook it was just so beautiful and so thoughtful so I've done one pick a card reading already you can see in my pick a card reading playlist um, but I've realized that this deck tells people like the real truth like what you need to work on what you need to heal like basically this is not a reading that's for the week if you want to know what you need to work on and like what's coming up for you or what you need to heal then this is going to be a deck for you I'm going to deliver these messages in a really gentle way and I'm really excited to see what comes through for you. Definitely let me know what you think in the comments below. So today you can choose a message and you're gonna choose from some objects that I'm gonna pick up real quick because I forgot. Ah, um, okay, so we've got number one is the piece of bark. <laughs> number two is the stick. And number three is the pine cone. Oh, yep, the stick in the pine cone. They're making a return to the channel again. The piece of bark, number one. Number two, the stick, or number three, the pine cone. Once you have chosen, you can head down below to the comments and to the description where the timestamps are posted so you can click on that and be instantly fast forwarded to your part in the reading. So for those of you guys who choose number one, let's see what your message is. Shuffle in the cards, anything can happen here. What wants to come out for you today? Are you ready to dig deep? Oh my gosh, okay, so the card that you're getting, are you ready, is do you like yourself? So this one, oh my gosh, I mean, the thing about not liking yourself is usually it's not something that is obvious to us like I don't think any of us really go around thinking oh my gosh I absolutely hate myself like sometimes maybe especially us women we can do this a lot with our appearance we can have really low self-esteem I think men can too I think all people can as well but I think that it's easy to start kind of subtly putting ourselves down and start subtly kind of hating on ourselves without even realizing it. So I always thought like I had a lot of self-confidence and I had a lot of self-love, but I realized I was hiding behind like this false sense of confidence and this like false extroverted personality to like fake 
that I was really confident even though I was super insecure. Can anyone else out there relate to that? <laughs> um, when you start tapping into yourself and you start realizing, wow, like I'm really hard on myself. Wow, I can't believe like there's these thoughts going on in my head and like how much I'm beating up on myself when I look in the mirror or when I say something or after a conversation or after coming back from hanging out with people, you start realizing, wow, like maybe I don't really like myself as much. And so this is a card to ask you to start like checking in with your thoughts so that when you are looking in the mirror or when you're uh, you just came home from hanging out with your friends and you're starting to overthink and replay the things in your head or when you just went on a date or like you're reading back through text messages when you're flirting with someone you like to start sending yourself love start sending yourself love for the way that you look in the mirror when you look in the mirror train yourself to smile train yourself to dance a little bit train yourself to find yourself interesting when you're hanging out with people and you come home instead of ult like coming home and going like oh my gosh like i can't believe what i just said or oh no i hope that that person wasn't offended by me saying this or i wonder what these people are going to think or whatever start calming yourself and talking kind to yourself start saying like oh you know i just have a little bit of anxiety that's that's normal i'm just excited after a long day out with people i'm just of course i'm gonna feel a little weird of, about having like lots of social interactions and um i bet everybody else is kind of replaying the day over in their head and feeling weird about stuff too it's okay like we're all human we all make mistakes it's okay that i slipped and fell in front of everybody or that i accidentally farted in front of this person or, <laughs> or that or that i i had food stuck in my teeth or that i said this thing on accident or that oh well, i accidentally overshared again that's okay you know just start laughing at yourself start loving yourself and start training yourself to maybe instead go write some gratitude or think gratitude about oh I'm so thankful I got to hang out with those people I'm th so thankful for the beautiful day I had and you know you know start loving that side of yourself um, especially when it comes to dating because I think a lot I get a lot of questions from people about freaking out because they said something to someone or because of a date and they're looking for reassurance afterwards and um, you know it's funny because I I won't be codependent with people like that like I will pull some cards and reassure you if that's what you need but I will also ask you to kind of mirror back to you where is that coming from not to beat you up about oh you shouldn't be feeling like that but causing you to kind of reflect on I am worthy you know it's it's okay for me to have these feelings or these doubts this is part of being human but I can send love to that side of myself like I'm I can send love to the side of myself to say and express and just be free however I need to be here's a secret is that most people are so like socially awkward themselves or feel weird themselves about things that they've said or how they're coming across or how they look or like how they're acting that they don't have time to realize that about you so we walk around sometimes not liking ourselves because we're placing these judgments that we think other people are placing on us but we're really just judging ourselves what what <laughs> what are we doing <laughs> so a lot of this happens in the mind a lot of it is really subtle a lot of it can be like really hidden deep underneath but over time we we start to not like ourselves sometimes we're adopting things that other people have told us sometimes you know if we're raised by neglectful or emotionally or psychologically abusive people or we were bullied in our childhood or we felt left out growing up or something like that um, or we had an abusive relationship that treated us like that we can that can kind of get stuck and embedded in our head and so we move forward and we're like oh I don't like myself but What's been projected onto us is another person that doesn't like themselves projected that onto you. What? The things that our minds do, okay? What do you do when you realize you don't like yourself? Step one is ask yourself, where is this coming from? Is this just coming from inside of me? Oftentimes it's not. Oftentimes it's stuff that's been projected onto you by other people or by society. And sometimes it's just you, you know, feeling insecure. A lot of times it's judgments that we're placing on ourselves that we're imagining other people have placed onto us. I don't care how psychic you are, 
Sometimes we trick ourselves into thinking this person's judging me when they're not. Um, and then maybe sometimes people are judging you to your face or on your social media and that's awful and we have to remember that we get to choose what we want to believe. We get to choose how we see ourselves. So liking yourself is a choice. It's not just something that happens randomly. I literally just did it, you guys. These girls walked by, they're speaking another language, and I they noticed, like, I'm here on the side of this bike trail, like, people are walking and riding by, that's why this video's cut up a little bit. And I imagine that they were, like, making fun of me for, like, YouTubing and, like, being all, like, oh, look at this influencer or whatever over here. And then I caught myself and was like, they could just be talking about something, like, funny. Like, they're not probably not talking about me, and even if they are, who, who cares? Like, I like myself, I'm glad I'm doing this, like, I'm out here. I don't care, I gotta get this done and like, F it. So this could almost even be a card about letting go of what other people think as well, but another step to liking yourself is you making the choice, you know, asking yourself where this comes from and then making the choice, I'm going to like myself, I'm going to work on this. So mere work, I've talked about this a lot in some of y'all's personal readings, mere work is so important. Start by getting dressed up, looking your best, and look in the mirror, and instead of going like, well, F, I guess this is as good as it gets, or I'm never gonna be pretty, or, or I'm never gonna feel like ripped enough, or look, whatever it is, start looking in the mirror and just be like, yes, this is me, get it. Like, I'm a queen, or I'm a king, or like, I'm a boss, or whatever. Just, and then put on some music and dance around. If you can get used to doing this, like in less clothing so you can like see your body or even naked <laughs> if you've got privacy and the curtains are down maybe light some candles and just have some fun and connect with yourself connect with your body love yourself there's a strong message with this card telling you this is body mind and soul so the words that you speak to people start feeling more confident in it and if you say something weird start stop judging yourself that it's weird and just Start telling yourself, I'm human, I'm authentic, I'm expressing, I'm emoting, I'm me, that's okay. Um, with how you act around people or your mannerisms or whatever, yourself on camera, yourself in pictures, start training yourself to look at those things and just be like, oh, how great is it to be alive? Look look at me, I'm, I'm a person, I'm here, I'm in this body, how wonderful is that? And so mantras and affirmations are really important here. So maybe write down a list of mantras and affirmations or just start kind of making them up in your head and start training yourself to be kind and to like yourself. Um, I always say, talk to yourself as if you were a small child. Like if you had a child um, and they were feeling self-conscious or they weren't acting like they liked themselves, what would you say to them? What would you say to your inner child? And start saying those things to yourself because inside of you is an inner child that's sad and that wants to be loved. It might feel a little awkward. So start giving yourself that nurturing. Give yourself the gift of liking yourself. I hope that this video resonates with you. Thank you so much for coming to my channel and I will see you next time. Peace out. So for those of you guys who choose number two, let's go ahead and get your message. Anything can happen here, anything can come out. Are you ready to dig deep with me? Okay, let's see what wants to come out. And you're getting two cards, oh my gosh. Actually, you're getting three. Okay, here we go. So the first card, <laughs> I had to stop the video for a second because I realized there were just like cards everywhere and you actually got three cards. And this is, this is a message. Like even if I just read these cards to you and backed away and left, left it at that, it doesn't even need much explaining, but we'll go there for sure. <sighs> this says, it is time to open up. Let go of limiting beliefs, find your purpose. So sometimes in life, we can feel like we're just going through the motions and we grow up basically being brainwashed by the system, by the school system, by your country, by your family. Not all of it's bad. Some things you learn are good. Some things you learn you can decide to keep as part of who you are, your identity, or you can associate with. But there's a lot of things that we absorb, especially between ages zero and eight. Our brain is like a sponge, just absorbing things. And, and we get to a point in life where 
we close ourselves down. We close ourselves down to options. We close ourselves down to opportunities. We think that because we're this certain age, because we grew up this certain way, because we come from this type of social standing, because we, you know, are come from this sort of class or poverty level or we're because we're this race or because we're from this place or because we, you know, grew up in this sort of tradition or because this or that, that we can't do this, we can't do this, we can't do that. And there are some real things out in the world that could make it more difficult for people um, to definitely establish themselves or like whatever. I mean, I'm not going to deny hardships. I've traveled the world. I've seen many types of life. There's some things I'll never understand because of how like my life was. But all of that is something that if we want to use it to block ourselves, if we want to let that be our excuse, if we want to associate with that, then we can let it take us down. All of us have to stay, take a stand. All of us have to be way showers and pathfinders for the next people that are like us or from our path. I just wanna open up real quick and tell you guys that I came from like a really abusive, toxic background. And I don't really identify with that as much anymore, but I did. I came from poverty. Um, I didn't have uh, education you know, traditional education, I had learning disabilities, ADHD, uh, psychological stuff like depression, anxiety, PTSD. Um, and for like a while, like, I kind of let that be my excuse to not move forward in life. I, I had these beliefs that were telling me like, I can't do this, I can't do that, I can't travel the world, I'm not allowed, it's not possible or that I'm too old to start that dream, or I'm too young to do that thing, or like, it's just all these concepts that are in our heads, either that we invent ourselves or we've heard from somewhere else. And so what ends up happening is these limiting beliefs get stuck inside of us, sometimes even subconsciously. Sometimes we don't even realize that we have a belief. It's just holding us back from finding our purpose or from doing what we love. And so something that I usually ask people to tap into their purpose or to tap into what they really want to create in this life, I always say, if you were like a multimillionaire and you didn't come from that situation or you didn't have that one thing that was holding you back or like if all of the, those things did not exist and you were completely free to do whatever you wanted, like what would you do with your time and where would you go and like what would it be like what would your life be like and usually i remind people that of course you're probably going to travel of course you're probably going to get like a really nice car and like a fat whip like and like a cool house and like you're going to take care of yourself and you're going to spend a lot of time chilling with friends and just doing nothing but at a certain point all of that becomes really boring and everybody wants like a purpose everyone wants something to do or to create or to be or has a message to share or something to give this world so ask yourself that like once you get past all the like oh i would buy this and i would go here and i would do that like eventually that's going to become boring to you and just part of your life and there's like our soul craves to do something more, to give something more, to share something more. And it doesn't necessarily have to be something spiritual. I remind people in order to find your purpose, you don't have to do something spiritual. You don't have to do Reiki, crystal, tarot, whatever. I just happen to do this, like I love it. Um, and that's the point is, is that you love it. Um, and it doesn't always have to be just one thing. One thing doesn't define you. Like this tarot thing I do and my life coaching does not define me. Traveling does not define me. Um, so it can be like, you know, my lifestyle doesn't necessarily define me. I'm bigger than that. So are you. But when it comes to finding your purpose, it's kind of a group of things that go together. You might not ever be able to quite put your finger on it, but it's a vibe basically. And so when it comes to like what kind of vibe you want to create with your life, ask yourself like, what do I want to give to this world? What do I want, what do I want to share with this world that I love? What do I have inside of me that's already overflowing in abundance? What would I give for free? Like, you know, what, what, what is just coming out of me? What's just pouring out of me? What could I do forever and never get tired of? You know, what is my gift to give this world? And what are my gifts, plural, to give this world? And that's something you're gonna want to explore. And sometimes we don't know because we haven't given ourselves 
ourselves a chance to figure that out. We haven't given ourselves time to explore that. And, you know, we're forced to like go to school and do this and then do this after school activity. And sometimes we are lucky enough to be able to take an art class or try something that we like, or we're in a, a, a family or community or society that gives us those opportunities. And that's so cool. Some people are given those opportunities, but not everybody is. So if you've kind of grown up and you're realizing that you're lost and you just don't know, so you have to reparent yourself you have to take the reins and give yourself those opportunities to try different things, to taste life, to sign up for different activities and hobbies and interests, to start at the bottom, to not even know how to do it, to, to feel like kind of weird just starting from nothing, to you know be willing to fail at certain things or to give up on certain things so you can keep trying and keep refining. So that is your final message. Keep trying, keep refining. It is time to open up, let go of limiting beliefs, find your purpose. I hope that this reading resonates with you. Thank you so much for your support and I will see you next time. Peace out. So for those of you guys who choose number three, let's go ahead and get your message and see what card or cards coming out for you. Are you ready to dig deep? Oh my gosh, woo! Are you ready for this message? It's gonna sting a little bit. It says, are you willing to heal? So here's the thing. When something traumatic happens, like when someone passes away, or when we get broken up with by somebody, we have a breakup, or when we've been treated poorly by people that have raised us, or by friends, or we've lost a relationship, or we've experienced some type of injury or any type of trauma. Um, sometimes what our brain does in order to protect us is that it goes into like a shock mode and a survival mode. Sometimes because we have to make it through our everyday life while that is going on, um, our brain will file away a lot of this trauma and pain and store it for a later time where we feel like things have kind of settled down and we can bring it up. An example of this is, have you ever just been go, 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 going and you decided to take a vacation somewhere? And as soon as you got there, maybe the first day or second day, you like break down into tears or you have a fight with someone that you're with or you kind of have this meltdown or maybe it's a weekend. Maybe like you have a, like a decent week and all of a sudden Saturday comes and you just are crying and feeling depressed and you don't even know why. It's because like your brain has realized that you've slowed down, you're at peace now, you have time. Let's bring this shit up. <laughs> why not? Now's a good time, right? So this is what happens. Um, and Sometimes when it comes up, it's overwhelming. We don't know what to do. And so we push it down again and we just keep doing that. And that's how major breakdowns occur. That, you know, that's one of the reasons a major breakdown can occur in my opinion. This has happened to me in my life. I'm sure it's happened in yours. If it hasn't, then great. You're, you're, you're healing, you're being in the moment, but our brain does this. So the question is, are you willing to heal? How do you heal? Oh my gosh, I could talk about this for like another two hours, but something to work on for today with this card is first of all being present with yourself tapping into your emotions into your feelings you can do this through meditation you can do this through writing in a journal so this is what i would suggest honestly is to start keeping track of your feelings and your moods and like documenting your breakdowns i actually have a mood journal and there's even some apps you guys that you can find for this you can start noticing patterns you can start connecting this back and write about you know what it was like for you growing up with your family we've all got a lot of family wounds not everybody but this is a thing this is a thing for sure we've got the mommy wound the daddy wound mommy issues, daddy issues, you know, so writing that stuff down, writing about relationships, certain breakups, writing about friendships, a lot of these wounds come back to, to relationships or loss. Um, those tend to be the main, you know, kind of themes, but it could be anything. It could be a body thing. It could be, you know, so you got to give yourself the time and the space. So start making space. And sometimes when you first start healing or you first start paying attention to things, it's like opening Pandora's box and it can get really intense and you just go into a depression. So you might even want to think about contact, 
acting a professional, a licensed therapist or counselor. Tarot readings are great for this, but honestly, you need a professional sometimes. So therapist, counselor, somebody who is trained in how to help people through trauma. Sometimes you have to seek medical help, you know, for depression, anxiety. Don't be afraid to do that. Sometimes it's just that stuff gets real and we need help. And um, it's normal to seek help from a community. I mean, even back in the day in ancient tribes and villages, when anyone would experience a loss or the death, the group of people, the community would go through it together. But I think in our modern societies, a lot of us grieve behind closed doors. It's, it's, it's not like that everywhere, but some places we grieve alone and we grieve behind closed doors and we feel like we have to put a smile on our face and just keep going. And that's how these things get pushed down. And so simply just turning towards the healing or the pain instead of running from it can be something that can help you. And naturally your body will guide you through a grieving process or through a natural healing process. And so I'm not sure if you heard about this before, but um, the grieving process, let's talk about the stages real quick. The first stage when you're grieving from something is what's called denial or shock. It's like, no, no, like they didn't break up with me. They're, they're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna show up. I remember my last breakup. I like laid on my bed for days, staring out my window, um, waiting for his truck to pull into my driveway. Cause I just could not believe that we broke up. <laughs> that's shock. That's denial. Um, the next stage in the grieving process is called bargaining where it's like, well, maybe we can be friends with benefits or maybe we can just, uh, be friends or maybe we can meet up for closure you know this is in the context of a breakup but it could uh, the bargaining could almost look like anything um, maybe if you uh, somebody passed away you think like maybe if I can just work a lot and busy myself with this project then I won't have to feel this or maybe I can just like get all obsessive about the funeral and like and like make it perfect and like it'll somehow bring them back or maybe if I can figure out how they really passed or the truth about it then or maybe if I can uh, you know we all grieve in different ways but we just kind of feel like we can control the situation and that's it's okay it's not wrong that you're in shock or denial or that you are bargaining this is part of the process it's our brain trying to process it trying to wrap our minds around the fact that something traumatic happened so the next stage in the grieving process is anger. So usually this is us like going off on people around us, being really short tempered. Sometimes we're angry at ourselves or angry at the other person. In the context of a breakup, sometimes this can look like that person coming down off that pedestal and us being like, you know, F this person for, you know, breaking up with me for doing this or for doing that. Uh, you know, how could they? Or uh, maybe in the context of someone passing away, being angry at the doctor or the nurses or angry at yourself because because you wish that you would have said something more than <laughs> than you said so yeah <laughs> maybe it sounds like that bird Rawr! I don't know if you heard that but a bird came by <laughs> I don't know if you heard it um, but I saw the video because actually a crow came and landed right above me and it's crazy because I'm talking about death you know that's basically what healing is or realizing there's a trauma is it's it's like a death cycle it's something that you've lost or something that's left your life it's a death it's a chaos, it's a destruction. And this is a natural and normal part of life. I think the crow reminded me that because I have a crow card in my Wildwood deck and it's all about rebirth. It's all about um, death leading to rebirth and like this being part of nature and part of the cycle. And so healing is all about embracing the cycle. I was just totally reminded about that. So anyways, we're in the anger phase. We know what that's all about. The next phase of the grieving process is sadness or depression. You know, it's just crying a lot or feeling kind of numb or hiding under the covers of Ben and Jerry's, you know, that kind of thing. Like, or just you can't eat it all. Oh, and look, there's a cat. There's a cat. I'm gonna film it. So I wasn't able to get a shot of the cat cause like she went and hid in like this little bush, but we did actually find out that it was a mama cat. <laughs> um, wow, you guys who chose this one are getting a lot of animal messages. I'm like, whoo, slow down. I'm trying to, trying to get all this info to you guys. <laughs> so actually the cat has a lot to do with, uh, of course, embracing the mystery of life. Like they're very mysterious creatures. There's, I could go on about the cat's uh, spirit animal forever, but they're, they're a strong link between the unseen realm 
um, between this realm and so they remind you to embrace the mystery or to embrace the things that you cannot see and so I think that's another part of the healing process that we learn that like it reminds us to embrace the mystery of life and embrace that we can't control everything. Yes, we're the master creators of our life and we can make things happen and I'm all about manifestation, but it's a balanced perspective between that and um, being humble to the unseen forces or to nature or to the natural cycles and seasons that happen on this planet. Call it God, call it mother nature, call it the unseen forces, whatever you want to call it. It's about honoring and observing like the role and the part that you play and how none of us are immune to these cycles and seasons. And so this is a season in your life. This is a cycle. And um, <laughs> yeah, it's just, I'm laughing because it's just like, are you willing to heal? And it's almost like, are you willing to accept the role that you play here? Are you willing to realize that you're a part of this? Are you willing to let these cycles flow through you instead of getting stuck and instead of resisting them? So the final part of the grieving process or the healing process is called acceptance. And it doesn't mean that you like forgive whoever hurt you. It doesn't mean that you've completely let it go. It's not like it never happened. Um, there might be a part of you that will always feel sad when you think about it, or there could be twinges of memories from it sometimes still, that's normal. But it means you no longer let this define you. It no longer uh, keeps you from being able to enjoy your life and from being able to embrace every day. You're able to move forward and make decisions again. You're able to laugh again, smile again, love again. Um, and that's how you know you're in the acceptance stage. So a lot of us just try to skip all the way to acceptance right away. And there's this thing in a lot of our societies where it pushes us to like just get over it or forgive and forget or you know just you got to show up to work and have your a game on you can take a couple days off work but that's it you got to keep going oh you can't quit drop out of that class to heal from that because there's no exceptions you can't drop out of that class to heal from that because there's no exceptions uh, so you actually have to give yourself and find a way to give time for your healing. So sometimes that does mean dropping that class or taking a break or taking a step back or taking the weekend or the month or the year or the week or the years to allow this. And sometimes this process just hits you in the face when you least expect it. But what I can tell you is sometimes we're worried we're not going to be productive because we're healing but this is the most productive thing you can do. Like it will help. It will clear your root chakra. It'll help you manifest things. It'll boost you forward in life. Even if it feels like one step back, it'll be two steps forward after. You also want to be careful that you don't get stuck in healing. Some people like escape into healing and they just heal all the time instead of moving into acceptance and getting out of victim mentality and allowing themselves to live. So, you know, but most of the time, I think people are more afraid of to become a victim. It's okay. In order to become a survivor, you must first become a victim. Before you become a survivor, you must first become a victim. But I digress. The question today is, are you willing to heal? Are you willing to go there? Are you willing to allow this process? Are you willing to accept that you too go through cycles and seasons just like the, the plants here and the ocean here? Are you willing to take your place in nature and to see the healing process as something that can grow you and shape you and change you and flow you somewhere amazing instead of it being this horrible sentence, this horrible time? Are you willing to accept that it's going to be awful, that it's going to be uncomfortable, that it's not going to be amazing? Are you willing to be okay with that and flow through to the other side gently? Are you willing to take the time? Are you willing to heal? So I hope that this message resonated with you. Thank you so much for coming to my channel and I will see you next time. Peace out.